Hey, in this video, let's go ahead and take a look at what it would take to rig up a uh, mech. So the sci-fi mech that we will be rigging um, was actually created from this tutorial by uh, chimperzone.com and you can see the link right here. You're welcome to uh, check it out. So this is the source of our uh, creation. And the uh, person who uh, built this and who took uh, who followed the tutorial is is a uh, friend of mine. His name is Farhan uh, Warsi, and he's from uh, India. Uh, this is the artist that uh, followed the tutorial, and I strongly encourage uh, you guys to find him on ArtStation, uh, follow his work, and um, I'm a big fan. All right, so Farhan was not, uh, nice enough to send me uh, the robot, so let's uh, jump into Maya. All right, so here I am in Maya, and this is the model that um, I was given. You can see that this is uh, clearly a high-end, uh, beautifully crafted uh, asset, game asset. If we uh, click on the model, we can see the total number of faces. It's only 14,000. So this is great for um, for any uh, modern uh, game engine. All right. So the challenge today, or the task, uh, would be to uh, attempt to rig this in some kind of a uh, efficient way, where we don't need to do too much, but um, ideally, just maybe get him walking, and maybe um, you know. Uh, shooting his uh, his weapons, right? So um, what would be the best place to start? So usually when I uh, do these kind of um, custom rigs, what I like to do is I definitely like to personally uh, turn off the textures. And um, if you click on this button right here, uh, the default material would be applied to uh, any mesh that you're previewing in Maya. I'm also going to turn off my lights and turn on my uh, wireframe. Uh, and this is kind of an easier way for me to look at the model and try to figure out what would be the best way to uh, rig this, right? And you can also see how it was built. All right, so let's go ahead and look in the outliner and see um, what is going on here. So the model is currently consisting of different uh, parts. You have the main body if I open this up you can see there are different elements and none of this is combined so one of the things that I would uh, definitely point out is if you are creating a game asset each one of these each individual uh, mesh that is not combined is going to create a draw call in the game engine so a model of this complexity um, is definitely uh, is going to create probably a lot of draw calls that are maybe not necessary, right? So like the the body uh, should definitely be merged into one mesh instead of having all the different pieces. And I know that Farhan sent it to me uh, knowing that um, I'm going to do this and optimize it for the game engine specifically. But of course, if you are doing a film or a short, uh, th this stuff would not be necessary. So I'm only strictly talking about uh, using it for games, right? And uh, just keep going down, down the list, you can see that the left arm, um, and I can press F to kind of zoom in, you can see the beautiful uh, weapon. This also has all the different pieces, right? So one of the uh, first things that I would like to do is let's maybe have a quick discussion about which uh, which pieces of this uh, mech are going to be actually bending, right? So just looking uh, really quick, you could see, let me go ahead and open these. I can see that the bottom uh, leg here definitely needs to be rotating. So this is, would be like his uh, bottom, you know, like a calf, right? The uh, top leg would need to have a joint, so it would be rotating probably from this pelvis, right? Um, another joint would definitely be controlling the entire body, which is almost like, you know, in some strange way, you can think of it as like the character's head, right? Um, 
so the pivot would be right there he doesn't need to turn in this example because I don't even see there's no separation whatsoever for the for this mech to actually turn or pivot uh, left or right or spin that's the word I'm looking for uh, so there's just one solid mesh and maybe that will make things uh, even easier for us to uh, to rig uh, the next thing that we have are the arms so we have these arms and um, these could just maybe rotate up and down they definitely need, don't need to go uh, left or right right all right so the uh, there's a couple different approaches that I'm thinking of. One is we can create uh, IK handles and build a custom rig for this guy. Another, uh, maybe a clever approach, if you look closely and you kind of uh, study the design of this uh, model, he almost looks uh, humanoid, right? Like almost like a biped. You have the um, the two legs you have the body you can almost see, see the head and these could be you know shoulders and arms so I'm wondering if maybe it would be fun to try to use the human IK uh, to rig this and get him um, you know walking around we could do that uh, before I would actually I think that's the route I'm gonna take I'm gonna see if I can actually use the human IK because this is really uh, reminding me of like a humanoid uh, stand um, but one thing that I would like to show you is if I didn't use a human IK and I wanted to do a custom rig um, what would be the steps for that right so normally what I would do is definitely select the entire uh, character go into my channel box and I can see there's a couple layers that are already created. So I have the body and the weapons. So what I would like to do is let's set them up as a template so I can uh, actually select them. And if you want to create a human IK, uh, if you want to create a uh, IK chain, so let's go to uh, rigging and take a look. So if you wanted to create a IK handle, that controls the leg. How would we do it? Um, the first thing you would want to do is obviously uh, set up a couple of joints, right? So let's go ahead and try this. Um, I'm going to go to create the joint and I'm going to put a joint. Let's do it from the side. So I'm going to put a, jo uh, a joint uh, right here. This is sort of the center of um, the leg. And this is gonna be more clear in a minute. And then I'm, I think I'm gonna put the other one is where the bottom of the leg would be rotating, which is sort of in the middle of this. And one more probably where the foot is. So somewhere, somewhere in the middle of this. All right, so think of this again as just a leg. Let's go in this perspective view and take a look. The uh, next thing we would need to do if we went this route is obviously move it into position, maybe go into the front view and kind of align it to where it needs to be. And if we use the IK handle, one of the uh, important things is to keep things uh, just like with the human IK uh, leg. Um, you want to make sure it's straight from the front view uh, in order to for the IK handle to work and rotate properly. So these three are kind of lined up, which is great. All right, so the next step after that would be, let's go ahead and link some of this stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to find uh, the bottom of the leg, which is right here and I'm gonna hold on the shift key and I'm gonna bind it to this joint here. So let's go to skin, bind skin. Let's go to options. I'm gonna reset my options. And let's go ahead and bind to, let's say selected, just for this example where we're using the IK handle. And um, let's go ahead and say apply. 
Okay, if we wanted to test this, we can select this joint and make sure that it's indeed uh, controlling that leg in the bottom. All right, the next thing we could do is let's find the uh, other leg, which is it's going to be these pieces here. And what I would like to do is hold on the shift key, select this other joint, and let's do the same thing. I'm going to uh, connect it to uh, to this to this joint and now if I grab this I should be able to control the entire leg sure enough and then I can also control the bottom of the leg right very nice now let's test the uh, IK handle and see how that works so uh, for, for, uh, for us to use the IK handle all we need to do is go to uh, skeleton enable IK uh, uh, create IK handle right here okay so I'm gonna go ahead and click on it and I would want a controller uh, a handle from here to here as soon as I did that you could see the first one was created and then the second one let's look on this again would be from the knee uh, to the foot right so now we have two handles and how would we control them? We don't have any way to grab them um, or control them, right? So what I would do if uh, we did the custom route, I would go to curves, maybe do a NURB circle and just create a circle. Let's go ahead and put this in the center and kind of move it into position. And this would be our uh, handle that we can grab to control the robot uh, robot's leg i'm gonna put it in, put it in position and if you wanted to uh one fancy thing that uh, you could do is right click go to vert and you can actually create like a custom looking handle just for uh just for your character right so maybe we can move these closer you know something something custom looking. All right, so you have a handle. I mean, you have a um, you have a controller. All right, now what we want to do is grab the handle, first one and the second one, and then hold on the shift key, select our uh, controller and do a uh, press P. As soon as you press P, you can see that both of the um, IK handles were put inside the controller and we can actually call this uh, left leg you know controller all right so now if I grab this I should be able to control the leg and this would be a way you would create like a walk cycle um, you know definitely do it on both sides obviously and that would be the process of creating kind of a custom rig for uh let's jump out of this mode and we can turn this off for a second just so we can see uh, how it's looking so you can see how that works right so that's pretty cool and that's definitely one way of doing it and the other thing we could do is um, have the toes to be affected when the foot comes down so creating a custom rig um, is definitely possible but for this example i really want to explore uh attempting to plug him into a human ik and if we do it right i bet we can even try to use a motion capture to get him walking or uh, running and i think that would be uh, that would be a lot of fun so let's try that next i'm gonna press ctrl z a bunch of times and just pretty much delete um, everything I've done so far. All right, so here we are back at our default state. Now, if this was, again, a game character, um, I think definitely you would want to merge all these uh, together, right? So maybe let's go ahead and do that. I'm going to uh, I'm going to turn off my texture once again, put the default uh, material on, and turn my lights off, and make sure my um, wireframe is on. Okay, 
I'm going to select the uh, character. I'm going to go to poly modeling and press on this button here, combine. And now if I uh, go to my outliner, I can call it mech and clear my uh, history. And now simply delete all this other stuff that uh, came with the robot. So now you can see in the outliner, it's literally just one mesh combined into one solid uh, piece. And this is what you would want uh, if you, again, if you import this into a game engine or even, uh, this even could be like a mobile game asset and um, consolidating the mesh and combining it is what you want. All right, uh, so what would be the next step to attempt to set up the human IK? Well, let's do the same thing. Let's go ahead and make sure we can select the character, right? So. I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna delete these uh, previous layers. We don't need them anymore. I'm gonna select my mesh, create a new layer. And just like before, let's go ahead and go into uh, template mode. Very nice. Now let's go to uh, human IK. And if you don't see this, you can click on this button here. And I'm gonna click on uh, create a skeleton. All right, as soon as I cl click on create a skeleton, uh, this was created in the middle of the grid. If we wanted to, we can go to display, we can go to animation, we can go to joint size, and we can change the thickness of our joints. So for this video, this kind of makes sense. So I'm gonna go with something like this at three. And let's think about this. How can we customize this skeleton to fit our Mac, right? So one of the things, um, I could see right away is that we don't need three spines. So let's go ahead and make it, let's simplify this dramatically. I'm gonna say one. You can see now it's just one. Um, another thing I could do is fingers. I, I'm gonna turn off all fingers. I don't need fingers because we have guns. So essentially I just have, um, you know, his arm and his forearm, right? Uh, let's see what else can we turn off. I don't need the toes because we um, we can control the, the, these three toes with uh, custom uh, joints, so we we can't really use the human toes. Um, and let's see what else can we do. Maybe uh, the neck. Let me. Uh, I'm thinking, I don't really need, think we need a neck. How about we go to zero? Yeah, we don't even need the neck. Let's, let's go with something like this. I think this, this makes sense. This looks pretty good. So uh, let's see if we can get this working. Uh, I'm gonna go into my front view and I don't need these lights. So I'm gonna go to show, turn my lights off and I can even turn off the cameras. Let's go ahead and grab the center of this and kind of put it into position somewhere here. Let's go ahead and grab uh, this and put it in the center of the leg. I'm really more interested in centering this than this, right? Because this is going to uh, rotate from, from like here and we can uh, double check this. Uh, from the side view in a second. I'm gonna put this here and I'm gonna put this, the toes kind of in this place here. All right, let's go ahead and jump into our side view and just make sure this makes sense. I'm going to put this right in the center of the circle. I'm gonna uh, put this in the center of this circle. And let's go ahead and center this as well. So somewhere around here. All right. I'm gonna select the right side of my leg and go ahead and click on this button to mirror uh, left to right. Now keep in mind that's his left. So his left to right. All right, uh, let's see what else can we do. Now this, 
is going to control kind of the entire uh, top. And if I jump out of the template mode, you can see, uh, let's turn X-Ray on. So this right here, when I rotate this, it needs to rotate the entire top of the mech, right? So which means that this circle here needs to be um, kind of where the pelvis is, which is kind of strange, but this is where we need the rotation to be. Uh, so let's go ahead and go into the side view again. And let's go ahead and turn our um, wireframe on. And I'm just gonna grab this and place it right in the same position as kind of the pelvis is. I know they're kind of overlapping, which is kind of uh, odd, but um, I do need to make sure that it's in the proper, proper place, proper place. So I can actually click on this and let's go ahead and do, uh, let's see, we can go uh, select, we can do inverse and we can hide everything else. And this is gonna allow us to see uh, better where the neck is. So this makes sense, right? It's right in the middle. Okay, very nice. Let's go ahead and go into the front view. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to turn on um, my wireframe. And I don't really need these shoulder clavicles, right? So I think I'm going to turn these off as well. Let's go ahead and turn these off. Uh, and let's go ahead and take this which are going to be the arms and put them in the middle of where the gun is. So it's kind of hard to see, but what I'm doing is let's go ahead and select this so we can see it better. I'm going to double click on this and I'm not really interested in this uh, weapon because the weapon is in the center of the shoulder and the shoulder needs to be um, controlled by this joint here, right? So I only need to see that. So I'm gonna go uh, do that trick again. I'm gonna do select inverse, hide everything else, and let's just only look at this. I'm going to grab my uh, shoulder. And in this view, I need to make sure that it's right in the center of this uh, weapon, the left weapon, just like this. And now what we could do is we can bring everything back. Let's go ahead and grab the uh, end, which is the wrist of the character, right? And because this joint is gonna be rotating the weapon, um, I don't really need this one uh, at all, right? So I think I'm just going to leave it alone just here. I was thinking I'm bringing it in front, but I don't really need to. Unless we take this and do something like that. Maybe, maybe this will make more sense, actually. So it's like his arm is almost uh, bent, right? So you have the kind of the shoulder and then you have the uh, arm uh, of the weapon. I think that makes sense. I'm gonna select this and uh, mirror it on the other side. And let's kind of review and see uh, how this is looking. Yeah, I think this makes sense. All right, let's go ahead and see uh, what happens if we uh, attempt to uh, bind this mesh to the skeleton. All right, so I'm gonna click on um, my mech. I'm gonna hold down shift. I'm gonna select, I'm gonna select the, um, pelvis of the 
human IK, so it, it selects the entire uh, skeleton, right? And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to rigging, uh, skin, bind skin, and let's go ahead and reset this again. And I think I'm just gonna leave everything as as the default. Maybe just dial this down. I don't really need the influence. To, it's not gonna need to be super um, soft, right? So let's go ahead and say apply and close and just see what happens. Now, of course, we're gonna have to adjust uh, all the weights, uh, which should be pretty simple, but let's take a look and see um, if this makes any sense whatsoever. So this will be controlling the leg, which is great. Ignore all this, because we can adjust the weights there. This would be controlling the knee, which also makes sense. Very nice. This would be controlling the, the top of the mech. I like that, that's great. All right, this one would be rotating the weapons. And of course I can disconnect the body. I'm only looking to make sure it's con look, uh, controlling the weapons, which is great. This doesn't really need to be moved, obviously, because there is no um, geometry for that. But, you know, the, the cool thing is uh, we could do during animation, you could grab something like this and move it just a little bit to give it like a kick. Uh, like a, you know, like the gun is firing and it's there's a little kick. Obviously, it wouldn't be moving the body or just moving the weapon. So just maybe a cool little effect. So, um... As I'm reviewing this, I think this is a, a really interesting and clever way to rig up a uh, mech. So uh, another thing we can do is we can select the rigging, the rig, and in the human IK settings here, we can go to control rig, and that's going to give us all the uh, controllers, right? We can turn off the FK mode and just take a look and see what happens here. So very similar to an actual uh, avatar or a character, which means this could probably be plugged in into a motion capture file. Really cool. Alright, and then this would be his... I guess this guy would be his... Uh... And what happens if we rotate it? Obviously it's gonna probably break the character, but there is there could be some rotation a little bit, uh, not too much, right? You could get away with rotating a little bit before breaking it. All right, so the next thing we, we want to do is let's go ahead and adjust some of the weights and take a look and see um, what would uh, we have to do to do that. Um, I'm going to jump out of the control rig. You can go to stents if you want to reset it and make sure you're you didn't uh, move uh, these joints out of position. Uh, then we can go to none. And now let's go ahead and select our mesh. And let's see if we can uh, fix some of these uh, weights, right? So if I click on this and attempt to review it, you can see that it's grabbing the body of the robot and I don't want to do that. Um, I actually don't want any stretching whatsoever because this entire model is made out of metal, right? So any time you have this kind of stretching or uh, squish and stretch uh, is probably not a good idea. So let's go ahead and see if we can fix that. I'm gonna go to my face mode and I'm gonna uh, make sure I can select my uh, joints and I'm gonna attempt to just grab all of these. If you hold on the shift, you can hold on shift and click uh, period to grow your selection all the way up so that that will ensure that it grabs all of these pieces here um, now what I could do is I can do a select uh, inverse and one of the new things in Maya 2023 uh, and maybe even 2022 is you no longer need to go to verts mode to uh, lock the selection down when you're painting weights uh, before, if you have an older version of Maya, you had to go to uh, Select, Convert Selection, and, and uh, Convert it to Verts in order for skin weights to work, but you no longer need to do that. Uh, now what you can do is you can just leave it on uh, Faces, 
and you can go to skin, go to paint skin weights, go to options. Let's go ahead and close our outliner. And let's say I want to um, make sure that all of these uh, weights are not being affected by this uh, leg. So I'm gonna right click on this and say select influence. And you can see uh, clearly that all of this is linked to this. So what I could do is I can go to replace uh, and drop the value all the way down to zero. And because these verts are all selected, right? They are gonna be the only ones who will be affected by what, I, what, I'm, what I'm gonna do next. None of these will be affected because they're not selected, right? So uh, that's great. Now what I can do is because the value is set to zero, I can flood it and then uh, look uh, right there and see, see what happens. So it gets rid of this color, right? Let's go ahead and right click on this, say select influence and do the same thing. Make sure that nothing is getting uh, influenced by that. And what I can do now is I can jump Let's go back to object mode and let's just test and see if um, when we rotate this joint, the body should now uh, not be affected. Very nice. So you can see uh, how easy it is to adjust the skin weights by just flooding the entire mesh. Very cool. All right, so I'm gonna just grab the bottom piece only Turn off the joints, select, uh, I'm going to select all of these guys here. Hold on the shift key and click grow selection. And I don't want to uh, grab anything above, above here, right? So I'm going to hold on shift, double click on these. And now uh, I'm going to go back into paint weights. Make sure that I am uh, affecting this influence here. So I need to just find the right spot. Here goes select influence. And I'm gonna flood this 100% because I want all of these points be linked to this joint 100% without stretching. So I'm gonna flood it. You can see it turns white. And let's go ahead and do the same thing here. I'm gonna select just one face, hold on the shift key and just grow my selection. And I'm gonna hold on the shift key and double click on that as well. Make sure I got everybody. Uh, go back into skin paint, uh, paint skin weights. And let's go ahead and right click, do select influence. And I'm gonna flood this value of one as well. And now all of these points are linked to that joint only. Let's go ahead and go to object mode and just test and see. So I'm going to grab, uh, make sure I can. So I'm going to select my joints here. All right. And you can see how this is rotating without stretching, right? So we, we fixed that issue, which is really cool. So technically, if I go back into my control rig and I can turn off the FK and just grab the, con the controllers, you can see how the leg is no longer going to be stretching. It actually is acting like a real solid metal, right? So it doesn't have any of the uh, strange, well, not strange, but cartoony stretching that we had before. So that's pretty much it. You would just have to, re uh, you would just have to uh, repeat the same method of selecting and flooding uh, the mesh to each uh, join to make sure that it's uh, only affecting that part of the mech and nothing else and uh, That's pretty much it and then for um, Animation uh, I think I'm gonna make another video. I'm gonna go ahead and go through this and adjust all the um, Paint all the skin weights and then in the next video. I will um, create maybe a simple animation of him doing like a simple walk cycle and maybe uh, firing his weapon. I hope you learned something and you enjoyed this video. Please like and subscribe and I'll see you next one.